In the Aminabad area of Lucknow, the capital of Uttar Pradesh, Shishir Srivastava lived with his family. He had a small family, consisting of himself, his wife, and their daughter, Gauri Srivastava. Nineteen-year-old Gauri was a law student. She was quite cheerful by nature and had a modern outlook. Shishir Srivastava owned a shop in Aminabad where he sold interior decoration items, while Gauri's mother, Tripti Srivastava, was a housewife. It was a very happy family. But then suddenly, on February 1, 2015, something happened to this family that they had never imagined. On February 1, 2015, around 12.30 p.m., Gori had left home to get her father's jacket dry cleaned. Before leaving, she told her mother that she also wanted to go to the temple, so after the dry cleaning, she would head straight to the temple. After leaving home, Gori first dropped off her father's jacket at a shop for dry cleaning and then went to the temple. At that time, several acquaintances had seen her leaving. A considerable amount of time had passed since Gori left home, and by 4 p.m., she still hadn't returned, which made her mother worried. When Gori did not respond, she called her, but Gori did not pick up. Gori's mother called her several times, but Gori did not answer even once. Worried, she called Gori's father and informed him that Gori had left at 12.30 p.m. to get the jacket dry cleaned, but hadn't returned yet and wasn't answering her phone. After that, Shashir Srivastava also tried to call Gori. After several attempts, the call was answered, but it wasn't Gori who picked up. It was a boy. He said, Don't worry, your daughter will return by night. Saying this, he hung up. When Shishir called back, the boy gave the same response again. And when Shishir asked to speak to Gori, the boy immediately cut the call. By now, it was 5 p.m., and Gori's father had also closed the shop and returned home. He told his wife that they should wait a little longer for Gori. Maybe she was with her friends. They waited from afternoon until night, but there was still no sign of Gori. Gori's mother called Gori's number again. This time, the same boy answered and said that Gori was sitting with him at Eco Park and would be home shortly. Gori's mother asked him to let her speak to Gori, but he didn't let them talk, and once again, he hung up. Gori's parents now started feeling scared that something bad might have happened, so they thought of informing the police about the boy. But before that, they called Gori once again. The boy told them that Gori's health had suddenly worsened, and he was taking her to SGPGI Hospital. Upon hearing this, Gori's parents rushed to the hospital in a panic, only to find out that no patient named Gori had come there. After that, they also went to Eco Park, but Gori was not there either. By now, it was 7 p.m., and they tried calling Gori again, but her phone was switched off, increasing her parents' anxiety even more. Exhausted and worried, they went to the Aminabad police station and reported the entire situation to the police. The police registered a kidnapping case and began their investigation. The entire night passed while searching for Gori, but they couldn't find any leads. Meanwhile, on the morning of February 2, 2015, around 7 am, some people passing by Shahid Path Road noticed a bag lying by the roadside, with several dogs circling around it, sniffing it repeatedly. After a while, the dogs tore open the bag, but as soon as they did, everyone present there was horrified, as human body parts were visible inside, and the dogs were gnawing at them. After that, the people chased away the dogs and immediately informed the police. Upon receiving the information, the police quickly arrived at the scene. They seized the dismembered body parts and started searching the area around the incident. During their search, the police found another bag hidden in the bushes, which contained dismembered hands and a head, suggesting it was the body of a girl. After searching the surrounding area, the police found all the body parts. They then sent them to the hospital for reassembly. The discovery of human body parts in a city like Lucknow caused a panic in the entire area, and soon, the news spread like wildfire across all media, from news channels to social media. Meanwhile, Gori's parents were already very distressed because their daughter had not returned home, and when they saw the news on TV about the body parts found, they became even more anxious. When the body was reassembled, on February 3rd, the police called Gori's parents to the hospital to identify the body. Gori's parents were already in a terrible state, but upon seeing the body, they broke down and cried uncontrollably. The body was indeed that of Gori Srivastava. The police now considered the incident as a case of kidnapping followed by murder and began their investigation. 
The news was now circulating everywhere, from news channels to social media. After that, the police obtained Gori's phone number from her father and tried to retrieve her call details, but no significant information came from Gori's call records, as most calls had been made by her parents. The police could not gather much information from the other numbers Gori had called either. However, when the police tried to find out Gori's last location, it was traced to the Telebog area. The police then asked Gori's parents if they had any relatives or acquaintances in Telebog. Gori's father replied that they had no relatives there, nor did they know anyone. He mentioned that Gori didn't have any friends in Telebog either. The neighbors also confirmed this. Gori did not mention anything about Telebog in front of them. After that, the police formed several teams to investigate the case. One of the police teams decided to check all the CCTV cameras installed in Telebog. About 150 CCTV cameras were examined. Ultimately, the police's hard work paid off because they found footage showing Gori walking on foot. In that footage, Gori was also seen chatting on the phone, but shortly thereafter, she got on the bike of a young man who was wearing a helmet. As soon as Gori sat on the bike, the young man started it, and they both left the area. While Gori and the boy were visible in the footage, the quality was not good enough to determine the bike's number plate. However, this was the only footage the police had of Gori. After much effort and hard work, the police managed to find out which company's bike it was. After that, a police team went to the RTO office to gather information about the bike, but they could not find any relevant information there either. However, when the police began questioning people living in Telebog about the young man on the bike using the CCTV footage, it was revealed that the young man was none other than Gori's friend, Himanshu Prajapati, who lived in Telebog. Before arresting Himanshu, the police started examining his birth chart. The investigation revealed that 23-year-old Himanshu was studying for a BCom degree at a university in Rajasthan and was also taking coaching for the SSC exam. When people who knew Himanshu were shown the CCTV footage, they recognized him immediately, and according to the police, Gori was last seen with Himanshu. Therefore, the police quickly went to Himanshu's house, but it was locked. When they asked the neighbors, they found out that Himanshu's entire family had gone to Mumbai, meaning Himanshu was alone at home, but he was not present at that time. After this, the police began searching for Himanshu and soon arrested him. He was then taken to the police station for questioning. Initially, Himanshu denied being with Gori at that time, but when pressed firmly during the interrogation, he quickly broke down. During questioning, Himanshu revealed that he had met Gori through a common friend a year ago, in 2014. Gori was an open-minded girl, so she had friendships with several other boys as well. Therefore, Himanshu thought, why not invite Gori to his house that day? In fact, he had secretly fallen in love with Gori because he thought she loved him too. However, Gori did not love him. She only considered him a good friend, which is why she came to meet him at his invitation. On February 1st, 2015, Himanshu Prajapati brought Gori to his house on his bike. They talked for a long time there, but then suddenly, Himanshu asked Gori to give him her phone. Gori flatly refused to show him her phone, which made Himanshu furious. He snatched Gori's phone from her. After that, he demanded the password for the phone. Gori refused to give him the password, and Himanshu pressured her, eventually managing to get the password. When Himanshu opened the phone, he saw that Gori had sent some photos to another friend. Seeing all this, Himanshu became extremely agitated. After that, an argument began between them. But when the fight escalated, Himanshu strangled Gori, and she fell unconscious. Himanshu thought Gori was dead, which is why he panicked and ran out of the house. After that, he called a friend over, and they both stood outside Himanshu's house, talking for about two hours. Then, Himanshu's friend left. Himanshu was very tense, and after that, he went into a shop where he drank a lot of alcohol and started thinking about how to dispose of Gori's body. After a little while, he left the shop and bought a saw and some bags from another store before returning home. Once home, he immediately began dismembering Gori's body, separating her arms, legs, neck, and torso, and putting them in different bags. After midnight, Himanshu discarded the bags one by one in the bushes near Shahid Path Road. Himanshu thought Gori had died from strangulation, but that wasn't the case. In fact, when Gori's post-mortem report came in, 
It shocked the police because when Himanshu had strangled Gori, he believed she was dead, but she was actually alive. She had just gone into a coma. However, Himanshu, thinking she was dead, had dismembered her body. After disposing of the body, Himanshu cleaned his house thoroughly and then went to sleep. During the search, the police recovered Gori's mobile phone, her clothes, and her sandals from Himanshu's house. They then arrested Himanshu's friend, who had been standing outside Himanshu's house talking to him for two hours that day. Based on Himanshu's statement and the evidence, the police prepared a charge sheet and presented both of them in court, where they were sent to jail. However, two months later, Himanshu's friend was released because he had no involvement in the murder. Then, a few years later, Himanshu's lawyer also filed a petition for bail, but in this sensational murder case, on July 11, 2022, the High Court rejected Himanshu's bail application. Finally, on June 26, 2024, Justice Sauer Lavania's court granted bail to the accused Himanshu due to a lack of evidence. However, the victim side's lawyer still claims that this case is under trial, and they have many pieces of evidence sufficient to prove the accused guilty in court. Currently, Himanshu is out on bail, and the case is still ongoing in court. Friends, the purpose of sharing this incident is not to hurt anyone's feelings or to disturb anyone, but to raise awareness and alert you. What are your thoughts on this entire incident? Please share your comments in the box below. And if you liked our efforts, do like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Thank you.